All right, and let's go ahead and get started. Howdy, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shark and Bear, and welcome to the channel where today we're playing some more Sands of Aura. In our last episode, we finally managed to make it back over to the ruins of Herwell, explore all of the it had to offer, complete our, um, our quest for the Book of Scripture, as well as unlock the ability to equip talismans. Uh, we also ended up fighting the boss. I am going to butcher her name. I believe her name was Alera, the Lady of Herwell. And we managed to be defeat her and get some new crewmates, uh, which were the grave robbers that were there. Hopefully they'll come in handy later. After that, we n then returned back to Star Spire, where we then, you know, uh, completed a couple of quests, equipped our talismans, uh, upgraded our gear a little bit. I dropped off some stuff. And now we're heading to Tupi's Grotto, uh, which is the next story destination that we have uh, that we can go to. I'm pretty sure there's other optional locations you can get to, but uh, for now, I'm just most, mostly following the storyline. Don't get more green than that. Not out here. I keep forgetting he does that. So there's our marker that I set, which was nowhere near where we need to go. I can see the resonance bell right over there, so we'll go ahead and uh, sail a little bit over there. Um, I might do some side bit exploring after we complete like the next two locations, but for now I just kind of want to stick to the story and explore and get more gear and whatnot. You smell that? Wood smoke and ash. Keep an eye out for any drifting goods. I appreciate it. So, now that we are on Tupi's Grotto, we get to see these cool little creatures here. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they are benevolent. They don't seem to attack us in any way. So we're not really going to concern ourselves with them. I don't even think you can attack them. I'm not going to, just in case this game has, like, friendly fire and you hit them and all of a sudden you become enemies with a whole island. Um, let's see. Oh, hello. Clements, the sand-soaked verdant. The sound of smashing ceramic has led you to a man of only just. Swaying and sweating, the man reaches down to grab a water vessel, only to then smash it against the large door before him. The man's hands drip with blood, deep gashes from the sharp fragments of baked, broken clay. His eyes bulge with fear. The words he screams are as broken as the vases. Wilt comes not from sand, but that which we trusted most. That which we trusted most. And he seems very angry about it. So we call out to him, and he decides to run off. Only reason a man speaks like that, or roaring mad like... Maybe be sand soaked. Sand soaked? Mm. That man's more dried up than I am. Too long with that water. Sand start to play with your mind. Say things, see things. And then, like most things around here, death comes a calling. We should help him. Aye. He needs a night's service more than most. Best go round him up. Keep your eyes about you. Something's gone wrong with the verdant. The grotto's gone sour with night. A sand-soaked fellow, maybe. <laughs> Only one who knows what happened here. And if there's any water to spare. I feel good. All right, so now we're on our first quest here on Tubi's Grotto, the Sand Soap. So we definitely gotta find a way to uh, quench that guy's thirst. Maybe he won't be such a bad guy. And now we come in contact with our resident baddies. More undead. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe them out. But luckily for us, we've upgraded our weapon quite a bit. So we're in like pretty good shape weapon wise. Armor wise, we're still kind of toting the basic raft gear. I haven't really done any upgrades, so to speak, uh, but that's okay, because uh, if we don't get hit, we don't take damage. It's not going to be a concern. You do want to watch out for these bushes. They do inflate and then explode, but they just do a little puffs of dust and, uh, you know, just walk away from them. All right, so there's a ladder there. We're not really going to concern ourselves with that. I was just mostly seeing if there's any collectibles we could pick up over here, and there is one right here. Sacramite dust. Nice. We'll go ahead and take that. I'm going to head this way. Let's find ourselves a pair of stairs and a chest. I'll roll away from that dust. It's not really... Oh, it did a small tick damage. But nothing big. Spellblade rune and our Pommel Master cast, the Poisoner. Oh, I think that's the one I like. 
Uh, this one goes, is a pommel, poison hits, dealing 10% of weapon damage every one second for two seconds, stacking up to 10 times. I might actually leave right now from this island and use that, actually. Because uh, I actually really, really like that pommel. Because that poison damage, it adds up. So, I'm going to run back to our um, resonance bell over here. And take a quick travel back. Uh, the good thing so far about having reached both those islands that we've reached, uh, this and uh, Herwell, the ruins of Herwell, is that both items that have found to be particularly good have been like right at the start. So yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to clear my throat there. I just got done eating a delicious breakfast um, as a midnight snack. Uh, now that we've done that, we'll run up to the forge and we will swap out our uh, pommel. It's been a pretty good weekend overall. I'm still doing some weekend reporting here. Uh, this past evening, I actually managed to go finally see a rendition of the play for Wicked. And let me tell you what, that was pretty awesome. It was, <laughs> it was pretty wicked. <laughs> Yeah, joke. Um, all right. So now that we have our poisoners there, it matches the green on our blade. That's pretty awesome. It's like we're uh, it's like we're trying to do like a cool theme with our blade. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Remove it. That's what it removes. There we go. I'm hitting the wrong button. That's why. On our steps. And now we're back with our poison blade. This will really help, especially when we're in a boss fight in the future. We'll have that tick damage in case we need to run away. We'll still have ticking dots on them. And uh, it does stack, so very nice. All right. So we'll just follow these path of undead. Oh, there was... Oh, that's right. Everything reset. Oh, we have a guy doing range damage to us up top. Don't like you range damage. I'll let that one puff. Ah! You jerk. Oh, and you think you can just run, huh? I do. All right, so we took care of those guys. We got another undead right here. We'll be fine. Do a little whiff off. That over there, by the way, that's a supply cache. And you can actually find those all over the sand sea if you're like sailing around. You just at the beginning of your grain wake, you click a button and boom, you pick it up. Extra resources. Super nice. A remnant night? Craig, how many days has it been? You're either incredibly late or incredibly prompt. <clears throat> Care for a drink? A drink? The man pulls a bladder from his robes and pours its contents down his throat. From his grimace, you can tell it's not water. This Sep Krog you'll ever taste? And as an added benefit, it seems to be the only thing to drink around here that won't rack you full of corruption. How lucky for you. Quite, quite. But my friends here, they're not nearly as fortunate, sadly. They're wilted now. Could you do me a favor and kill them? That's what a knight does, I kills things. I found a man who's sand soaked. He needs your drink. Sand soaked? That's awful. You clear the wilted souls from the other side of this tree, <clears throat> and I'll give you as much of this sap grog as you'd like. But you'd best hurry. I'm drinking rather quickly. I'll see you on the other side. All right, so now we got a mission update where we go uh take out those guys that are bothering him and then we can save that soul from earlier that we saw we have a poison dude up here we're going to take him out oh there's a monster guarding something over there too we actually took a hit from him that sucks oh those undead are coming around oh we got a glimstone amulet so now we have some money to to make from selling that are they using these? Okay, none of these guys are gonna poison me. I do the poisoning around here now. Alright. Those guys got squashed. I didn't, I didn't even see these other two. The other guys are around the corner, so not much to see there. We've got some scriptures, leases. That's actually probably gonna give us our third talisman slot, because we were like right on the cusp of unlocking another slot. 
which means we might actually be able to equip a second talisman. I'm going to go ahead and stab her in the back. And, uh, there you go. To do their duty before. It's quite violent. Not a fan of violence. I am a fan of Sapdrog. <laughs> You'd best give me the Sapdrog. You've had enough. Fair. This is fair. Hey, say, you must have a ride off this place. What say I come with you? All my friends are dead, after all. And if I'm being quite honest, they never really liked me to begin with. My grain wake awaits at the docks. All right, so now we have another passenger that we can take on back home to Starspire. And we have the uh, Sephrog. So let's see if we can venture on the island, discover more stuff, and in fact, uh, save that individual. All right. The poison isn't really going to do its job anytime soon until we fight something a little bit hardier, don't you think? Like these guys. Oh, the poison actually does a fair bit of ticking damage there. It looked like it was doing like 16 a tick. Good stuff. And it was going to build, of course, when we did a couple more hits. We got ourselves our first pair of armor, the Nomad gear. In this particular situation, it was the Mittens. Alright, I see some undead over here. Oh, man. Dominated fool. I tell you what. This is just... This weapon is insanely strong. I know I've said that, like, a lot. But it just... It's hard for me to ever want to consider another weapon. Although that shouldn't diminish you from wanting to try a weapon of your own. Maybe you have better luck than I am. It might just be that I can't use... You know, finesse weapon in this game. Because uh, I suck at this use. No! Okay, yeah, we didn't get poisoned. Our roll was too quick. Sacramite dust, haste rune. Oh, chest on top of this hill. And from that, we got a rune. It looks like we have a little peninsula over here. We can go and see if there's anything down there. I see some undead. All right, and one more right in front of us. We have our Nomad Ashanka. That's the hat. What does the Nomad gear do? Your Testament bells are 25% more uh, stronger or more effective, or your Testament bells are 50% more effective for the four piece. I kind of wish that maybe the, the bonuses were like, you get one bonus here and one bonus here. But it's just that the bonuses are the same bonus, just better if you have all pieces. I mean, still fine, but a little bit interesting to have a little bit more mix-up or, like, bonus options for having the whole set. You could, like, mix and match. I mean, you can still mix and match, obviously, but I don't know. I, I just feel like if you have two bonuses on gear, they should be different. But again, the fact that all armor is viable... That, that I do enjoy. You can wear whatever you want, and it's never going to be better or worse than anything else. You just pick the passive bonuses that you enjoy. Um, but that's to say, I haven't seen all of them, so maybe we might find passive bonuses that are not good at all. Hello, friends. Welcome to the party. Alright, uh, this doesn't look like it does anything. Can't push over the cauldron or anything. It's kind of sad, we, we might have to circle the island with our green wake and pick up some of these supplies that we see after we leave the island. And I'm just following the straightest path because there really isn't that much diverging from the path. Just some side shoots, but more or less you get, uh, it's not really easy to get lost. Or, it's, yeah, it's not easy to get lost on these islands. It's, it's... You know, everything is fairly apparent in front of you. Looks like I see an item all the way over on that rock. Let's run over there. Pass this little puffball. And what do we have here? A glintstone ring. I love free money. All right. So, there's more or less where we were at just a moment ago. There's a book there. Can I interact with that book? We cannot. That's 
okay. Uh, looks like we have a normal and two of these enemies right now. And whoa, we have a place to mine. That gave us some more glint. Nice. If I see dude over there, we just cross this bridge over here, we'll be over there. So what happens if we were to keep following this path? Some more monster. Well, it looks like we would have gotten to where those guys are regardless, just by going this way. Oh. I didn't even notice the poison guy. Ow! Okay, he's dead. Talisman of the Stalwart. What does that do for us if we were to equip that one? The bearer of this object will become an immovable object while blocking. Any poison damage taken while blocking will be reduced by 20%. Not bad. Alright. What is this behind here? Is this a little secret? That'd be pretty cool. If I could jump over the rocks. Nope, that's just a, an invisible wall. As far as I can tell. We have a pair of stairs here. And this will give us to the sand soak, dude. Lying before you is the cultist from the docks. His state worsened. A woman sits beside him, whispering. She peers as you approach. Please, the flow of it here has spoiled. And <clears throat> please tell me I have some water with you. Clemens, the fool... He's dying. Alana runs her fingers through the man's hair. Many strands of gray found throughout his thinning bristle of chestnut. I ran into no one who gave me Sapgrog. Quickly, give it to me. Clem Clements may yet live. Get rid of Sapgrog. Alana brings the vessel gently to the dying man's lips. At first, he claws at the edges of her robes, but soon after a portion of liquid reaches him, he notices a slight color returning to his face. Thank you for your part in this. Now please, I must watch him closely. All right, now because of that, we have another recipe that we can give to Yilda. All right, uh, that is actually the main route right there, but instead we're going to opt to go this way. And the reason why is because if you've been paying attention, the route that we've actually been going has pretty much been very circular. So if we pick to go this way, we'll actually find a shortcut ladder that'll take us back to the green wake if we so choose let's see is there anything to be had by going up there nope invisible wall go ahead and jump down there and get our scripture of lesis we'll run this way i think there might be something up here on the right can't see that but i know it's bad about to roll cool special attack rune and i think this is another piece of nomad gear yep we got the nomad's coat all right so we're looking for one more piece of nomad gear but before that come up this way and i'm gonna go ahead and use a bell I think actually the poison killed him. And we have all four pieces of our nomad gear. We'll go ahead and drop the ladder. And then if we go this way, what will we find? Another relic. We've got a glintstone amulet. And if we head this way, what do we find this way? Oh, uh... Oh, this is actually the way we're supposed to go. Can we go back to, uh... What was it? Uh... That those two over there are next to. I am a big doofus. I apologize for that. For giving wrong directions. I thought for most certain that was going to lead to where those undead were just a moment ago. Jump up here. And by jump up here, I mean walk up the stairs. And dash all the way back to where those two were. 
and we'll take this ladder. Or not ladder, these uh, stone stairs. Oh. Ow. I missed both of them. Hardcore there. I got some sacramite dust. Nice. Anything over here besides explosive puffballs? Nope, just explosive puffballs. We'll let them clear. Oh, no, uh, this actually is a shortcut to get to where we just were. Okay, cool. So we didn't have to run all the way back afterwards, which is nice. We'll run down here, deal with the undead, and then we should be good to get into like the final zone of the game, believe it or not. All right. Let's go ahead and hit this resonance bell, because I don't think those undead are coming back at all. Nice. And we'll go ahead and head into this little hatch. Uh, actually, can, yeah, okay. I was saying, can we discover anything around the island that we're at? But nope. Enter Tupi's home. We have a chest here. We got some more Sacramite and a rune. We'll head over here to the right. Is there anything? We got another scripture. And a bottle of brew, the Sorcerer's Soju. What was that? Another Sorcerer's Soju? Okay. Hello, little dude. You got a little bubbly pool here. You got your own jacuzzi. We're going to go ahead and enter the carving cave, and this is where we are going to find uh, Tupi. Just head down the stairs here. I love this area, honestly. Oh, Bonnie. My dear, oh, Bonnie. A night, finally. How long must I... Oh, wait now. I haven't back in the night. Why are you here? Explain the water crisis. Toopy doesn't allow you to speak, but two words before he's pulling your garment, bringing you down to his level. Now's not the time. Can't you see this isn't the time? <clears throat> a night I needed, and a night I have. What is it? Lay sight on what's below, knight. You'll not see a sight like him again. There writhes great loved Ubani, envenomated with the sickness of night. Something has turned him into a source of this wickedness. He radiates with the tainted brilliance of corruption. We cannot cleanse the waters of my grotto until Ubani himself cleansed. By you, cleansing night. It's what you are trained to do. Made to do. So what do you require? Free Ubani of his adamant, and I'll reward you with enough fresh water to set Star Spire afloat. What say you? If it must be done, I will. All right, so now we got to go down there and fight Ubani. Seldom the rune carver. With practice maneuver, the man before you works his hands across the surface of the nearly finished pylon. He feels for the imperfection in his work, memorizing the ridges that need worked down. Watch this man. He swings his chisel, never even considering that your presence is near. Leave him to his work. Alright, so we'll just take this door right here, and it'll allow us to go to the arena where we'll fight Ubani. We must first start the fight by destroying the uh, highlighted red pylons around him to anchor him down. I need to save those rolls. Shit. How did that hit us? 
Sorry to Bonnie. I rolled out of that, you jerk. We'll just stay out of that. After that happens, we can then, uh... Oh, it's doing it another time. Poison is doing a lot of work for us. It's still ticking. It, it, it downed him on his own. That's how powerful that strong uh, pommel is that we put on our weapon. It did a good bit of damage on its own and it lasted what felt like the entire fight. Did you see that? I cannot believe my eyes. A phantom capable of spreading such corruption. Oh, Barney? Old friend? The corruption has manifested and flown away. You're free. Too far gone. The corruption has stolen you forever. <sighs> Goodbye, oh, Barney. Knight, you've done as you've promised. And I'm honorable with my promises, too. Fresh water awaits you at the docks. Take it home. I'll meet you there. We've one last thing to discuss before you take your leave. All right, and with that... Come, all of you. Let us say our farewell. We've taken down New Bonnie. Bonnie. And now we can head back to Starspire with our first water ration to uh, quench the thirst of everybody at home. We also got another testament bell, so that means now we have four healing uh, bells. And we can get this elevator to work, it'll send us back up top, and there is a, deer, a door nearby uh, that'll actually... Oh no! We actually clipped through the elevator! There's actually a door nearby that'll actually bring us out where the sand-soaked man was throwing the uh, bottles of water at before. So we're not far away from our grain wake to begin with. That fight could have been a lot harder, but I think the poison really pulled for us through on that one. So we'll go ahead and head back to the ship where we'll also find Tupi waiting for us. Oh, oh. oh. No. No. Looks like someone had too much sap grog. That spirit, the envenomation of Ubani, the chains of our effort are dissolving. Once this world was like a flower, like the wind in a field, a mountain in a storm. Nought was there a sight like it, untainted, alive, and strong. But such brilliance cultivates ruin. It casts the shadow of possession, of control. A darkness manifested in Talamhel, taking eventually the form of night of corruption your order was only a seedling but despite such degradation an alliance blossomed myself my rune carvers a collection from your order together we sought to restore the beauty of this world all gave of themselves completely fighting until the very end what happened as you know, corruption can be unyielding. Containment was reluctantly chosen. The pillar of entropy looms over us all. A wicked monument to our failure. You've done as you've promised, Knight, and you are free to take the water you've earned. But I imagine Starspire's thirst will linger beyond one shipment. That wasn't the agreement. But with such a troubling revelation, I'm afraid the reserves of this grotto have become dearer to me. 
Tupi produces a carved slab of stone. This is a sigil of the god Melgum. Throughout Talamel, there are others like it, one for each of the brilliant <clears throat> ancients. Should you find these sigils, Knight, these seeds which would cleanse this corruption for good, fresh water will continue to flow towards Starspire. And if I refuse? Then Starspire will go thirsty as it disregards the collapsing of the world. I'll consider it for Starspire. Then you shouldn't be made to consider it alone. I'm sending Seldom with you back to Starspire. He's a rune carver like no other, able to etch stone in ways that will greatly aid your journey. Speak to him once you arrive in Starspire to activate the sigil. Treat him well. He is perhaps the kindest soul left in this world. Goodbye, knight. So the rune carver uh, is actually pretty awesome because of the fact that what he can do is basically take all the rune carvings that you already have and he can combine them to make better quality, stronger runes. So that's pretty cool. I am going to make a circle on this island and pick up all these resources we saw before. Maybe we'll find some stuff we can use. So we got, yeah, see, glintstone and uh, Sklinso ring and some sacramite dust. That's all really good. So yeah, I think it's worth making a little uh, drag around Boy, the island. Descent. Oh, <laughs> maybe a hole ahead. Yeah, no. As I run into the island hmm. for my amazing Some driving skills. Lost their reserves. Ooh. Rugged time. rum. Couple more items. Oh, hello. We gotta thread the needle on this one. Very narrow for our grain wake, but we'll do it. I think. Alright. I think I bumped it there, but I'm not gonna tell if you don't. All right, let's get on by. There should be at least one more I think I saw off the coast of the island, right? I could be wrong. I guess that was it. All right, so now we've done that. Can we actually go back to Starspire from here? Yeah, so we don't actually have to go to the bell. We just have to be on a grain wake or near a resonance bell. So what Tubi wanted us to do, oh, you saved us, at least for another day. This is what's expected of a knight, and according to Felker, you excelled in every aspect. Inform him of Tupi's revelation. I see. <coughs> so this is why you've returned with more than water. If this spirit is truly the threat Tupi claims, then I'm glad to have your attention on it. I'm proud of you. Truly. You've earned a rest. Enjoy your time in Starspire, because in the morning, we'll be throwing our full weight into this revelation. Ah, yes. And while you're at it, why not sail straight into an army of corrupted? Take them on with a sword in each hand. She looks over at you with her nose up. Stubborn fool could barely walk to the docks. A well done from bed would have been sufficient. Understood. So uh, now that we have uh, come back here, we can now look to uh, take, what was it, the item that he gave us? Tupi, I mean, it was the Melgum Sigil. All right, so believe it or not, we've actually gone to the place where we would need to put Malcolm Sigil. That would have been at the bottom of the burned church where the elevator took us. So I'm gonna go ahead and stash the Nomad's armor because I don't intend on using that either. Next area we go to is actually someplace I plan on using the uh, armor from because I actually like the way it looks and I am a fan of the bonus. It's not like outright amazing like it's not above anything else i'm not picking it for any other particular reason other than just i just happen to like that bonus so again always pick the ones you know that suit you um so let's see anything else i want to deposit nope i think i'm gonna hold on to all of this and then we are gonna go drop off Malcolm sigil so come up here and it should be basically on the way back to lawrence's house near the burn church path i think it's oh wait we already passed it. It's, uh... Oh, it's right here. 
go into the cavern and run down and drop off Melgum Sigil, and that's going to give us some more story beats. Make them away downtown. Alright. And from here, I think it's this one on the left we'll drop it at. Nope, lied. I lied. Which one is it? I think it's here. Have I been a fool? I might have to do something else instead then. Because I swear it was these. Hmm. I'm looking like a moron right now. Can be activated via Master Rune Carver. Oh, I see. We have to go to uh, his dude first before we come down here. Alright, that's okay. Scrap this part. That's what I said. We'll go to the Rune Carver first. We will have to come back here. I don't know then if we come down here yet. I can't remember. I swear it was right after Tupi's Grotto. Alright, so, in order to find the Rune Carver, he'll be next to Galena by Lawrence's house. So we'll just come back over here, and he should be on the other side of her. Here he is. As though he can sense your approach, Seldom nods in your direction. Present him with the Malcolm Sigil. Seldom takes the sigil from you. His movements are precise and exact. He turns and proceeds to his workbench and works his chisel gently over the stone. Upon his return, the impression of the sigil is palpable in the air. Seldom extends it towards you. And we take the sigil. Suddenly, the small golemite near Seldom opens his mouth wide. Well done, knight. Now, beneath the house of those so-called priests, within the sunken roots of Starspire, you will find the Nexus. Take the sigil there, and let the healing of the world begin. Tupi, is that you? Who else would it be? I shall be the voice seldom lacks. Alright. So, I'm gonna say goodbye for now. I'm gonna talk to Seldom, and we're gonna modify runes. So, uh, we can basically do several things here if we want. We can deconstruct runes. Oh. I did not even realize that you could level them up. But if we had additional runes here, we could upgrade our runes as well. Dust extracted. Oh. This is actually new to me. I never, apparently, I actually completely glossed over this. So you get some pretty gnarly buffs that you decide to upgrade this. And it looks like it only cost Glint to do so. Let's see, we'll just take it to a level three. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Cool. Now we have our fire attacks at level three. And it goes up to at level six, apparently. I don't know if it goes further than that. But pretty neat stuff. It looks like we also have a couple of other elements. I've only unlocked one other. And we'll actually, we're actually pretty close to unlocking another element we want. Come take a look. We'll go ahead and trade and give her all of our goodies that we have. Go ahead and sell that to her, as well as these glintstone amulets. It's another five. It brings us up to five thousand. And I think we actually have enough dust to upgrade Come our weapon look. again. I don't really need any more of these amulets. My creaking back. Before we go into the basement, not that there's any enemies down there or anything like that, but I am going to upgrade my weapon and I'm going to also unlock my talisman slot before I forget. Alright, so we got another upgrade. We are a hard-hitting dude right now. Find our pair of stairs right here and we'll make our way up and head to the priest so we can drop off our uh scriptures and here we are boom another
another talisman slot. This book of scripture has unlocked so much of. All right, so now that we have another scripture slot open or a talisman slot open, let's look to see if we can find um, another talisman to equip. While ringing a bell of resonance, the bear's physical form of strength and lessening damage taken by 25%. That's okay. Uh, let's see. That's the stall we just got. Allows the bear to automatically receive blint that was extracted from a slain foe. Eh, it's okay. Uh, rips souls from the bear's fallen foes and consumes them. Used to great effect against the noble pharaoh. I don't know what that does. I don't. Um, the drunkard one could actually be a pretty good thing. Um... I want to figure out what this one does. The Drunkard Talisman might be the next one we equip. We'll find out. Uh, so now we officially have two talismans equipped. And now we'll head on back to the cavern and drop off the Melgum Sigil that we had activated from 2B. Is that... Oh god. Why is she so loud? Hold on. I apologize for that. Why is she so much louder than everything else? I'm going to drop the volume very hard for this one. That's crazy. She's like three times louder than literally anything else in the game. All right, so that that was more tangible for my ears. I'm trying to blow my eardrums off, lady. All right, now we need to find one of these to activate. There we go. So, who are you? I'm going to interrupt her right there because of the fact that we don't even understand what she's saying to begin with. Can we interact with this? We can. We can enter the portal. Sigils of the Forsaken Gods. But I... I stopped you. You should have... What do you mean? Kevodar. You can understand me. Partially, yes. Who are you? But no one's ever understood me before. She twists as something calls into the darkness. We must hurry to the summit. The link to your realm is suffering. Oh, I'm I'm Aura. What is this place? This is the Dunes of Creation, where true death is only achieved through passage across. But the way is barred. The spirits grow restless and forget themselves. They become depraved. The same fate awaits you if we don't hurry. You're from the spirit before, from Mubani. Yes, but we don't have time. We have to get moving. All right, let's go. So uh, I will say straight out, what I will tell you here is that enemies will continuously spawn here. Stay away. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. Ooh, we got some buildup of something here. She managed to defeat those enemies. Now... And like her, I think we could probably fight the enemies. We must get to the summit. However, the problem with that is that they will continuously come uh, for us. So what we need to do, or the objective we're trying to do, is get to the end of this area. And if you can see in the distance, there's another bubble. So we are just trying to make our way to those bubbles. Uh, we avoid all enemies while we can. I don't even think, can we actually mine these? We can't even actually mine these. But the enemies can't hurt us as long as we stay in these little zones. And all we're trying to do is make our way to the next destination, which I think I see is over here. And I'm just going to roll my way all the way there, avoiding all enemies, because, yeah, they do hit you. But as long as we keep rolling, we should be fine. 
So let's go ahead and do this. And I'll keep rolling. I see the next bubble. And there we are. Time to find the next bubble. Just turning my camera where I can. I have no idea where we're going to go next. So I'm just going to choose to go this way, maybe. Yeah. Okay, there's our next bubble. We're almost there. We are safe. I wish I knew what those stacks do. But uh, I don't know if there's a, a proper way to see what those negative side effects are. Can we actually just run? The running is fairly slow. I feel like the, the, the dodge rolling is still better. And we'll wait till whatever this is falls off of us. And then we'll be rolling this way. Just around the bend, essentially. And I think this was actually the last portal before we reached the end. Lots of enemies around here. Let's just avoid them, keep rolling. And we're there. We're at the end. Another to work the tombs. Another missing piece. Of the few that have the ability, few are the pinnacle to stand before me, but I sense an oddity about you. Come closer. I'm actually going to turn the volume back up because it seems like the audio went back to a normal range. So give me just one second. Seems right. Oh, look, that dragon thing. It followed me. Shouldn't be in here. I guess there's a reason why it's not attacking. It cannot be. You carry a spirit, and your mind is still your own. You do not know what you bear. Give her to me. No. <laughs> your every action bespeaks obliteration. Do you perceive what your presence here means? What havoc will be wrought upon those already blinded? <laughs> Single fractures, and her him would have you think him innocent, <laughs> infantile. The mass lunges forward, but due to the weight of itself, cannot reach you. This is the sound of breaking bones of twisting flesh. We will have her. No. <laughs> Fain agency for now, but when you have outlived your usefulness. You will follow the manifold path back to me. I have questions. That is the only avenue of the damned. What do you want with Aura? The progenitor must always seek their children. And who seals breaking? That. The quietness of totality. I'm leaving. You speak as if you ever had an option. The mass lifts a twisted arm and suddenly you're weightless, hovering above where you stood. The air grows cold and stings the tip of your nose. Suddenly the temple begins to fold in on itself until there is nothing but blackness. Lysus, please. I cannot lose them both. Wake up. You're awake. Praise Lysus, you're awake. <clears throat> I thought that every remedy I tried, every invocation I knew. Where's Lawrence? Days he stayed at your bedside, carried you here himself. But his grief. Lawrence is very ill, night to be. He's bedridden. I fear the worst. He requested that if you woke, you speak with him. Take a moment to gather yourself. Understood. All right, so now it looks like we are back at Lawrence's place. Let's go check up on him. Should be in this room right over here. His face is gray and his body trembles. The sound of wheezing fills the room. Not again, Galina. 
Back in no time. Lawrence, it's me. <sighs> what say you, knight to be? I'm sorry I made you worry. A remnant is hardy in mind and in body. Galena said you wanted to speak to me. Do not lament a broken blade. Starspire needs you now. Needs a knight. He shifts his weight and points across the room with a shaking hand. My blade just there. Bring it. Fetch his blade. You place the blade on the bed, helping Lawrence to wrap his fingers around the pommel. Honorable friend. Under labored breath, he lifts the blade just high enough to rest it weakly along your shoulder. Be thou knight in the name of man. <sighs> Rise up, my... my... Lawrence? The blade clatters to the floor. His eyes are sealed shut, yet his dry lips, mouth, inarticulate words. Leave him be. So we'll let Lawrence be. It looks like we finally got knighted. Not under the best of a uh, situation, but we are there. Told him to just speak it and be done. That he lacked the strength for such foolish ceremony. But these craking remnant and their righteous codes. Ah, stupidity aside. Congratulations to you, knight. It seems your first duty to Starspire will be saving that old fool. What should I do? Few things sail faster than a grain wake. There is rumor of an elixir lying dormant in Talamel. It's said to counteract even the vilest corruption. Any idea where it is? Reports indicate a renowned alchemist named Tannen has taken an expedition to Paragon's Rest. If anyone knows of this elixir, it is him. The island lies to the northwest of Starspire. Will Lawrence be all right? A blend of hollow leak and bishwort should slow his wretched fever. But the infection, the corruption, it is beyond my abilities. Stay safe, Galena. I'll find Tannen. All right. Looks like we have our next quest. Leads us to the northwest, I believe she said. If we look at our map, we should be able to see... Oh, we have the spirit come out of us. Knight, I know of this elixir. It would be cruel not to tell you that it won't be enough to cure your mentor. Not alone. What do you mean, alone? There is another object. One of incredible power. It is a flame called the Azure Flare. Like adding another instrument to a song. Just a sliver of it may bolster the elixir enough to heal your mentor. Why help me? Because I know what it's like to watch someone suffering. All I ask is that in return you do not tell the sage about me. You must trust that I am not this evil that Tupi claims me to be. You said we would talk after Mentes. I did, yes. And you honored your word. So I'll honor mine. What do you want to know? Tupi called you a corrupt spirit. Even sages fear what they don't understand. What was that thing, Mentes? A great man once. A man of kindness. But he's become an example of how craving can change you. And yet he's still... What is Maveth? They want you to see it without really looking. They want you to believe this threat is indifferent. That it's only chaos. An ending without feeling. But there is more to it than that. Beneath the surface, there's anguish, longing. How do you know? Because I feel it like I feel myself. What happened with Ubani? Ubani was as kind as he was stubborn. Rare are those who still welcome the storm after they learn it will destroy them. Fine, tell me about this Azure Flare. Some say it is the soul of Talamel. The very heart of the gods. All I know is that the Azor Flare is Vera made. Before all that happened at the grotto, a once man arrived. He called himself Sir Gideon and spoke at length about the Ferrum. I overheard mention of an island called the Cinderhold. 
Maybe he's there and knows something about the Azure Flare. All right, let's go. All right, so now actually we have two destinations we can check out. So we open our map. We have two options. The first is Paragon's Rest, where the Alchemect is. That is where uh, Galena told us we could go. Another destination is past the ruins of Herwell. It is actually the Cinderhold, which is actually going to be our first destination because the first one, uh, it's pretty much the last destination I tackled before things will be fresh for everybody and everybody will learn the game along with me. Uh, so we're going to make our way to the Cinderhold because we're going to check out that area. I'll probably do a guide for that entire area in the next episode. And then once we've cleared up the Cinderhold, it looks like we'll do some more Paragon's Rest. I might even venture off a little bit because there's a couple of optional destinations. I don't know if they're story or not, but we can see right there at the corner. We have a little bit of a, looks like the end of a W. And then over here, there's also a destination near Starspire we can check out as well. Uh, I might actually start going over there first before we head off to the cinder hold in the next episode. Uh, so that being said, I think we are set to head off the island. Oh, I do have one more thing. I am going to go ahead and turn in the brew recipe we got, but I'm not going to make you stay around for that. It's just dropping off a recipe. That being said, if you like the content and you want to see more Starspire, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Uh, as always, I hope everyone is having a great day, and I will catch you all in the next episode. Later.